This is Surrender to Win, a look at what's holding you back from experiencing a life of peace and joy that God intends for us all. Your host is Brian Anderson, the program director and a substance abuse counselor at Rob's Ranch, a Christ-centered residential substance abuse treatment facility for men in Purcell, Oklahoma. This is Surrender to Win. Hey, good afternoon. I am Brian Anderson, and I would like to welcome you to another Friday afternoon edition of the Surrender to Win show. I am your host, and uh, man, I appreciate you coming in listening today. Uh, You know, today's topic, I think, is something that um, I think it affects a lot of people, if not everybody at one point in time. And it's actually one of my most favorite topics to talk about because I can personally relate to everything I'm going to discuss today. And the people that I get the privilege of working with every day at uh, my job as a therapist, uh, this is a, a, a subject matter that almost without exception, each individual that I work with Uh, also has and you know what I call today's uh, show is we are only as sick as our secrets now for individuals that have been uh, in and out of uh, the recovery field the recovery world uh, this should not be a a new uh, title a new subject or or a new statement Uh, we've heard this in and out and uh, I'm here to tell you guys, it is it is very, very accurate. We are only as sick as the secrets. And secrets keep us sick. Now, I'm not talking necessarily always uh, a physical sickness, but it can manifest into that if there's enough secrets and it is a, a heavy enough secret. But for anything secrets keep us mentally sick and as we talk today uh, I kind of want to uh, have you guys maybe look up a a scripture it's called it's James 516 and James 516 talks about confessing our sins to another person another human being another brother another sister confessing our sins to each other and then praying for each other now some people might ask well I don't under, I don't get the big deal you know if I confess my sins to God then you know that's all I need to do I don't owe anybody anything else and I would say you're right you you don't owe anything else but we live here on earth with other people Therefore, we're going to be subject, as long as we're human here on earth, we're going to be subject to, uh, you know, being concerned, if you will, about what people think about us. And that was something that was tremendously problematic for me growing up, was I constantly was worried about what people thought about me. I've learned over the years now that um, you know, I, th- I was more worried about what people thought of me than what people actually thought about me. But for me, that's irrelevant because I was always afraid that I wouldn't be good enough, that, uh, I wouldn't measure up, that I wouldn't be liked, or I wouldn't be accepted for who I was. And so that belief, that, that feeling kept me holding on to secrets about things in my life that I've since learned many, many, many people in this world have experienced or or do experience now. 
And so those secrets that I kept inside of either things that I had done or things that had happened to me, uh, things that I had seen or heard or, or any, any other way that information or experiences can happen, those things that I kept secret often, if not always, generated shame. And shame is an incredibly powerful negative force and, and emotion. Now, shame can sometimes be positive if it helps us change course, change the things that we do, uh, become uh, remorseful and uh, ask for forgiveness uh, both from God and from you know whoever else that may be involved. So in that case, shame is a positive emotion. But far too often, keeping those secrets that we have inside about things that we've done or that have happened to us generates an overpowering sense of shame. And we think, my gosh, if if anybody else knew about this, if if my spouse knew this, if my parents knew this, if my best friends, if if my boss or my employees or my employer or, or my friends or my church knew this about me, then I would be incredibly ostracized or anything else. And so that creates shame. That secret of wanting to keep that stuff inside to ourselves and not let anybody else know develops a feeling of shame. And you do that enough times and you hold on to enough shame, we actually can start to feel unlovable. And that we are going to be vulnerable to other people if they find out. And if I'm if I'm feeling unlovable and I have a fear of other people in this world finding out about whatever my secrets are, I'm going to start generating defense mechanisms to keep people away from me, to keep them, you know, at a safe distance. And and those those um those defense mechanisms, they can take form and shape of, of all kinds of different types of behavior. One of them, and I see this uh, a lot uh, with the individuals that I get to work with, is a phony facade. A, they're phony. There's a phoniness about them. And that may be that they try to present an image of who they want people to think they are. They they may, you know, be phony about things that they say they've done in the past or things that uh, they've accomplished and it's not true. I I did a whole show on fake and phoniness um several shows ago. That's another one of my favorite topics because it also has some application with myself. I have some of my own experiences with being fake and phony about things. And so that fear of what people are going to think about me, if they knew the truth, if they knew that this thing happened to me when I was a kid, or they knew this thing happened to me, um, you, you know, my job or or whatever it may be, creates fear that someone's going to find out. And so I keep it inside as a secret. And then it develops the shame. And it just sits there and eats inside of me. And we do everything we can to try and forget about it, try to block it out, try to act like it doesn't exist. Here's one of the problems that I found in my life. Everywhere we go throughout this entire world, we are bombarded by 
uh, stimuli. We're, we're bombarded by commercials. We're bombarded by TV shows, by songs, by other people, other people's you know names or what they say or what they look like. Um, I mean, the the list goes on and on. And so, you know, let's say that uh, you know I'm I'm a spouse in a in a relationship, and and I've gone out and I've had an adulterous affair. And so I keep that as a secret because I don't want anyone to know. I, you know, dang, I don't want my spouse to know. I don't want my coworkers to know. I don't want other people to know because I'm afraid of what they're going to think about me. So I keep it a secret. And let's say that that adulterous relationship ends. And I'm saying, you know what? It's done. It's over with. We're not going to think about it anymore. I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to move on. And let it go. And so we we bury it. We bury it deep down inside and, and say, well, it's, it's, it's done over with. But as that individual goes through life over the years, maybe they, they you know, they, they hear a song that uh, this mistress uh, and this individual listened to, or, or maybe it's a, a clothing outfit, or, or maybe it's, you know, a location. Whatever it may be, we run into that trigger ever so often, and it, and it brings up that memory. And th- I mean, that's how memories work with all kinds of stuff. We get triggered a lot of times and we don't, not even expecting it. And it brings up an emotion. It brings up a memory and they can be good or bad. Uh, I know around Christmas time, when I watch certain Christmas movies, it, it brings up wonderful memories of, of my childhood with my, with my family, with my parents and and i can i can you know see it being a kid again well, the same thing happens to me um you know certain uh, war movies or um sounds sounds of helicopters or certain smells like burning diesel fuel or or, or rotting trash that brings up negative memories for me from my time that i spent in combat during my service in the U.S. Army, and so I don't—I'm not expecting to be driving down the road and all of a sudden smell burning diesel or a you know a helicopter fly over. I'm not expecting that. I wasn't planning that, but that still triggers the memory. And any of that shame or that pain or whatever I had inside because of that experience is going to come back up and it's going to affect the way I feel. It's going to affect the way my mood is. It's going to affect, you know, everything about me that day. And then I'm going to have to go through the process again of trying to shut it out and, and act like it's not there and push it down and keep it a secret. Come on back after this break, and we'll keep talking about those secrets. See you in a minute. It's hard to take for a moment, boy. We've got to burn the ships, cut the ties, send the flame to the night. Say your prayer, turn the tide, dry your tears and wave goodbye. Step into a new day. Broadcasting from the 405. This is Crossover Radio. Radio with a purpose. Neuro Renovations is a faith-based chiropractic office that specializes in treating warriors, yet it's gentle enough for your kids. They work at freeing the nervous system so it can send full signal to the body. Their treatment is tailored specifically for your needs rather than putting people into a mold. Call or stop by for new patient specials and mention Crossover Radio for an extra 10% off. You can call Neuro Renovations at 405-200-1931 or you can stop by the office at 13325 North MacArthur Boulevard in Oklahoma City. Did you know that about 80% of all bankruptcies are due to medical issues? If you're a business owner, what happens to your business if you can't work for an extended period of time? What about retirement? Do you have enough to live on for the rest of your life? 
Do you have a succession plan in place for your business? As a small business owner, it's vital that you make sure your business is protected for the future. If you don't have a plan, Five Rings Financial can help get you on the road to financial security and protection. Just give us a call today at 405-413-3638, or you can email me directly at jamie, that's J-A-M-I-E, at fiveringsokc.com to schedule a consultation about securing your financial future. If you love listening to Crossover Radio, download the Crossover Radio app available on all major platforms. It's absolutely free to our listeners, and you can connect with us and listen on the go. Crossover Radio, it's radio with a purpose. You're listening to Surrender to Win with Brian Anderson on Crossover Radio, radio with a purpose. So, you know, as I was preparing for this show um, this week, um, and and it's pretty often I do it uh, every week before I prepare the show, I reflect back on my life. Um, and, I, you know, I do the best I can to be um, completely transparent and honest with with you guys. And everything that I talk about on this show, well, I'll say almost everything I talk about this show. There, there are some things that maybe I didn't personally experience, but I, I have uh, experience with it from a clinical standpoint of view uh, by learning it or working with it. But for the most part, everything I talk about on this show is something that I've experienced myself. Something that uh, I've been at one point in my life challenged with and that I had to decide whether or not I was going to do something about it or not. And I'll tell you, the greatest thing that uh, I've ever done in my life, number one was is that I truly, truly did the best I could and I do every day to surrender my life to my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. That's the single greatest thing I've ever done in my life. Because that single choice has radically changed the direction of not only my life, but my soul for eternity. Now, once I made the choice that I was I was done God I was done I was tired of hurting I was tired of being miserable I was tired of trying to figure it out on my own I was tired of looking for answers in everything from prescription medication to alcohol to money to whatever I was tired of trying to find Relief for how I felt inside. He saved me. Be a rest once more, oh my soul. I then was able to surrender and give my life to Him and begin the honest, hard work that it takes to make a radical change in your life. I had to face my fears. My fears of what people are going to think about me. My fears of being accepted by other people. My fears of, am I going to be good enough? I had, I had to drop the phoniness. I had to be willing to expose the secrets that I had inside. Because those secrets were keeping me sick. They were keeping me incredibly sick. And I'm not talking, you know, I had all these secrets about all these bad things. It was, some of it were secrets of something as simple as this. As crazy as this sounds, it's something as simple as this. 
when I was in combat, there were times where I was absolutely terrified for my life. Yet, I never wanted to admit that because I somehow thought that would be, you know, make it seem like I was weak. And I didn't want the men that I got a chance and the honor and privilege of commanding to know that I was scared. And that secret made me feel ashamed. I felt ashamed about myself that, you know, gosh, I'm not supposed to be scared with these things. Why do I have this fear? And I kept it as a secret for a long time until I finally decided to get help and went into treatment at Rob's Ranch where, <laughs> crazily enough, now I get to work there years later as a as a therapist, as a, as a counselor, trying to help other people who are experiencing the same misery and dark sadness and depression and anxiety and fears that I had. I get the privilege today of trying to help someone else out to come out of that, just as people helped me get out of it. And one of the things that began the transformation and change in my life, and if you're familiar with the 12 steps uh, of AA or NA or any of the other self-help groups, uh, there's so many of them that pattern themselves after the 12 steps. There's the steps four and five. And basically me paraphrasing this is, is step four is where we sit down and we take a very, very, very hard and almost always painful look at ourselves. And the only way this works is if we're 100% truly honest with ourselves. And, and we take this kind of inventory. We, we take a look at our life, at the things that we've done or the things that have happened to us. And we do the best we can to strip away all of the alibis and the excuses and, and oh, why I did this or did, didn't do that and, and this happened to me because of this. Or We try and strip all of that away and we just write down all of the stuff in my life that I feel shame or guilt or sadness or fear or any of those negative emotions. We, we inventory all of that. And if we do it, and we do it thoroughly, and we do it with the, the most earnest um, courage that we can, we're going to touch memories, and we're going to recall things that are our deepest secrets, that we swore to ourselves some way at some point in our life that we were going to take to our grave. I'm never going to tell anybody that this happened to me. One of the things that I experience a lot as a therapist is, for those that don't know, I, I work in a an all-male, Christ-centered, alcohol and drug treatment facility uh, that's 90 days long. And... The clients that I work with uh, in that facility are, uh, as I said, all male. And one of the things that I hear over and over and over and over again is that at some point, at some time in that individual's life, there had been some type of sexual abuse, um, molestation, trauma, uh, something that has created a tremendous amount of shame and fear or guilt. And sometimes, and actually a lot of times this happens when, when the individual is, is very young, five, six, seven, and they hold on to this stuff for the rest of their life as a secret. 
and it tears people up inside. Now, granted, as a person gets older, they can kind of push that to the side a little bit and go on with their life. And maybe it doesn't seem like it's there anymore. They don't think about it that much anymore because we've gotten really, really good at blocking it out. But it never truly goes away. And this goes back to what I said in the earlier beginnings of the story, of the show. We're subject to something that will trigger a recall of a memory anywhere we go throughout our day, throughout our life. It could be a, a song on the radio, a, a type of car, a color of a house, whatever it is. And most of the time we're not expecting it. And all of a sudden, bam, a memory gets triggered. And that completely brings everything back up. And if we have not properly, therapeutically, and positively dealt with it, it's going to continue to tear us up inside. With alcoholics and addicts, what I see over again is that they turn to substances to help numb that stuff out, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be sexual molestation. It can be anything. And, and folks, let me tell you this. Through my experience and working with as many people as I've had the privilege of working with, how somebody gets hurt almost becomes irrelevant, at least in my line of work. I'm not so much interested as how somebody got emotionally hurt as I am just accepting the fact that they are emotionally hurt. Because once a person is emotionally hurt, how they got emotionally hurt is really irrelevant. The sad part is, is most people will sit there and compare their own stories with other people's stories or other news stories or other friends' stories or whatever, and they will actually try and minimize or negate their own feelings because they don't think it is as bad as somebody else, and so therefore it's really not a problem. So therefore their feelings are not valid. And that does nothing but perpetuate somebody being miserable. Or the, the flip to that is is maybe somebody has done something so bad or had something so bad to them they, or they think that it is that nobody else on the face of this planet has ever experienced anything like that and so they keep it to themselves and they swear they're never going to tell another soul and that sits there and just eats at them. I've talked to people who have literally been in rooms with hundreds of people and have had those feelings of, man, if anybody in here actually knew the real me, actually knew what had happened to me, nobody would want anything to do with me. And all I can tell you is that experience shows you're not alone. We'll be right back. Hey, you've got oceans trapped in your eyelids. Tell me that no man is an island But it feels like it's a storm that I've been fighting Hey, I used to listen to the radio But I've got an army of voices Where is it? Crossover Radio Radio with a purpose For a great cup of coffee, there's nowhere better than Serve, where they only serve the best Grounds for Compassion coffee. Come visit them at 6736 Northwest 39th Street in downtown Bethany, Oklahoma. Serve is a home for Crossover Radio, and we can't keep our DJs in studio because they're all hanging out getting coffee. Serve is open Monday through Thursdays, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Fridays, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Serve coffee. We serve coffee. We serve the community. At Victory Church, our mission is to help people live, move, and be in the presence of God. Our service times are Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. 
We have two worship locations, 1515 North Kelly in Edmond and 4300 North MacArthur in War Acres. For more information, visit our website, victory.church, or call our church office at 405-787-4200. Come to Victory Church, where all are welcome. Are you a small business looking to enter the advertising market without breaking your budget? Well, I've got the solution to your problem. Crossover Radio. We are an internet radio station with worldwide reaching possibility, but locally embedded in the Bethany and Warriors area in Oklahoma. We have competitive advertising packages to help you reach new customers and grow your business. If you're a well-established business, we're here for you as well. We're able to handle all the advertising needs your business requires. We're also launching a crossover radio sports station in May of 2019 that will cover pro, high school sports, and everything in between, doubling your reach and advertising capabilities. To partner with Crossover Radio and grow your business, please contact us at contact at thecrossoveronline.com or by phone at 405 494 0234 Crossover Radio Radio with a purpose You're listening to Surrender to Win with Brian Anderson on Crossover Radio Radio with a purpose Hey welcome back And for the break uh we were continuing to talk about secrets, and I truly believe with all of my heart, you truly are only as sick as your secrets. As I was saying a little bit earlier, um, there was a part of my life where I, I had this phony facade. I wanted people to view me and see me a certain way. Because for whatever reason, I, I didn't like who I truly was inside. I, I haven't figured out why that is. I, I honestly not even really interested anymore as to why that's how I was growing up and and uh, through you know, my younger adult years because it really doesn't matter today all I know was is that for a long time long part of my life I just I just didn't think I was good enough I didn't think I could that I accomplished enough I didn't think that uh, if, if I was myself that people would actually like me. And part of the problem was is I don't know if I actually really knew who I was. And so I kind of lived a double life. You know, not like a, you know, Dr. Heckle and Mr. High. I don't know. Maybe I did. I know when I was uh, still drinking alcohol and abusing prescription medication, yeah, there was a Dr. Jekyll and Hyde uh, um, character I had. It was not, it was not pleasant, um, you know. And unfortunately, uh, the people I hurt the most was the the people that loved me and that I loved the most, from my parents to my wife to my children to my in laws to my other relatives and friends. But most of all, I, I was hurting myself. And so I lived this double life. And what did that double life it was? That it was back to that phoniness. I, I wanted to present an image that I wanted, that I thought people would like. And if you guys have been listening to the show for a while, you've heard me say this before. And that is that the life behind closed doors is different than the life you project out in the world out in society amongst other people if those aren't the same 
then folks, you're being phony. You're living a double life. And I don't care what it is. Whatever secret you're, you're hiding behind those closed doors and living a different life on the outside, it's a double life. Unfortunately, I see children who have to grow up in that double life. You know, mom, dad, somebody's a, an alcoholic or a drug addict and the violence and the yelling and the blackout drunks and the falling down and the breaking things and the yelling and the screaming and, and all of that that goes on inside that home behind closed doors. And, and that child or those children, they get taught almost by necessity how to keep a secret. Nobody wants to to go out in the world, out in the public, and, and go, "Hey, look, look at my life. Look at what look what happens at my home behind closed doors. My mom gets beat up every night. My dad comes home and he's he's completely wasted, and he breaks things, and punches holes in walls, and he yells and screams and calls me names, and he hits me and." He goes away for days and weeks at a time. I don't know where he is. He doesn't show up when he says he's going to show up. And it doesn't seem like there's anything I can do to make him happy. And all this can apply to the mom or the mother or the woman too. I'm just using guys for an instant because I'm a guy and I can relate. So that child grows up keeping secrets. And it just sits there and eats away at them. And it eats away at them. And they have to live a double life. And they have to project this image as though everything's okay when they're, they're hurting so bad inside. And they didn't ask for those secrets. They didn't ask for that stuff to happen to them. But here it is. And the secrets that they hold, some of them are unmanageable or unimaginable. I see it every day. And the answer for those individuals is the answer for the alcoholic and the drug addict and the other individual. We're only as sick as our secrets. We have to. To get those secrets out. I'm so grateful. For the program. For a 12 step program. That gave me a structured outline. That if I would just follow these steps. In sequential order. My life would change. And it took courage. It took trust. It took faith that things would be okay. And all I know was I was just tired of hurting inside. And so I I did the best I could to do everything that I was asked to do. And, and I did a fourth step and I did this fifth step. And that fourth step, again, is that's just taking an honest look and in inventory of our life. And writing it down. Everything. I don't care what it is. I put it down there. From those deepest, deepest dark secrets that I swore I was going to go to my grave with. To even little stuff. Like I stole some gum when I was a kid one time. Uh, you know, when I was like five or six years old. It wasn't that big a deal, but I did it. And I put it down. And then the fifth step comes along. And the fifth step is where we sit down and we tell another human being all of that stuff that we just wrote down. I'd already talked to God about it. I'd already asked for his forgiveness. And I truly know and believe that I got it. But I still had to tell another person. And that act alone did so much for me because it required me 
to face my biggest fears. That fear of what someone else is going to think about me if they knew this, if they knew that. And so I had to make a choice. I had to make a decision. Am I willing to tell another human being, face my fear about what they're going to think, face that judgment, am I willing to do this to expose those secrets to light? And I chose to do that. And I will tell you that without exception, without, without exaggerating, when I was done telling my counselor every single thing that I could think of that I'd written down on that piece of paper, and he looked at me and kind of smiled and said, is that all? And he kind of lovingly chuckled and said, that's not so bad. Now, to me, it was the most horrifying thing I could ever imagine. Some of the stuff that I went through and some of the stuff that I experienced and the, some of the feelings I had and the fear and all that stuff. It was, it was, it was monumental. But to my counselor, he was like, eh, it's not so bad. And and he didn't change the way he he looked at me or thought about me. And for the first time in my life, and I was 43 years old when this happened, for the first time in my life, I had truly felt free. I, I experienced a sense of freedom that I had never felt before in my life. And as I was walking out of the my counselor's office, it seemed like for the first time I actually was able to hear the birds chirping in the trees. And I could hear the wind. And and it was a it, it was a very peaceful feeling. A, a peace that I had never experienced before in my life. A freedom. And, it, and then it dawned on me. I was like, man, I don't have any secrets. Not a one. I've told another human being everything that I'm afraid of and all the stuff that had happened to me. And I'm still here. And I'm okay. Man, what a freeing feeling that was. I've never experienced anything like that before. And that's out there for you too. A sense of freedom that most people have never experienced. And then all of a sudden, a tremendous amount of fear that I had went away. So we'll come back after this last break and finish up on how those secrets keep us sick. Come on back. None of my pain has ever caught you by surprise. Still it's hard to trust you when I'm lost in the wind. But I'll trade every question just to lay down a rest in your heart. And I'll reach for your hand, oh, you led me here into the dark. And I won't ask you for reasons, cause the reason. Crossover Radio. Radio. Ah, do you hear that? That means the start of a good day in my household. If I don't have that first cup to begin my morning, then I'm guaranteed my day is going to be a struggle. And nobody makes better coffee than Grounds for Compassion Coffee. 
It's coffee with conviction. So head on over to their website, g4c.coffee. That's g, the number 4, c, dot coffee. Or give them a call at 405-603-1902 to get your own cup of Get Up and Go. I just, I, I, I just love it out here. It's so peaceful and you get chills when you come out and you, you feel the presence of God, man. And, you know, that's, it's something, and the feelings, that's something a lot of us have never had. Opiates, meth, alcohol, are you addicted? Rob's Ranch is a nonprofit, Christ based treatment center for men located in central Oklahoma. Rob's Ranch uses proven treatment methods and a program of spiritual growth to give men the opportunity to restore their lives and their relationships. Every member on staff has been there and are now in recovery themselves. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction to drugs or alcohol, please call 405 253 3838 or find Rob's Ranch on Facebook or online at robsranch.org. They're just so accepting, so caring. It'll change your life if you're not careful. On live, worldwide, 24-7, 365, it's Crossover Radio, radio with a purpose. You're listening to Surrender to Win with Brian Anderson on Crossover Radio, radio with a purpose. Can you imagine what life would be like for you if you had a constant state of peace, sense of freedom, not having any fear of what people think about you? Now, I know that there's people out there listening to this that, you know, that's how they, that's how they are. They're not alcoholics. They're not drug addicts. They, they, um, they grew up and learned how to deal with their emotions and they learned how to, to deal with things that other people would keep secret. So if you're one of that individual, man, God bless you. And I'm so, so happy for you. That you didn't experience some of the things that myself and, and the clients that I get to work with uh, have experienced. And, and none of us are without problems. None of us were, are without challenges, etc. So I'm not trying to, to insinuate that just us drug addicts and alcoholics were the only ones that have problems. The whole world has issues and challenges and problems. But I speak to you guys from the perspective and from the understanding of somebody who is in recovery from substance abuse. So for those of you out there that can relate to the things that I talk about, can you imagine what it's like to wake up in the morning free to go to bed at night without a spinning hamster wheel up in your head going over and over and over and over the thoughts of of the day and, and the past and what's going to happen in the future and the fear. See, that, that's how my life was for a long time. It used to take me hours to go to sleep because I'd just sit there and lay in bed and ruminate over everything and the little imaginary hamster wheel in my head would spin, you know, at light speed and it wouldn't stop and I, I couldn't sleep. You know, my amazing wife, she... We've we've been together 29 years. We'll be married 25 years here in March. And uh, for as long as I've known her, she's always been able to lay down and she'll fall asleep within like two minutes. And I never could understand that. And I was always like, man, that's just not possible. Nobody does that. But my wife does. And I am so grateful today to be able to say, when I lay down and go to bed at night, without any kind of medication, without any kind of drugs, without any kind of substance, when I lay down and go to bed, the hamster wheel in my head is is not there. And I fall asleep just in a couple minutes. That in itself 
has been an amazing gift. I don't have any more secrets. God knows them all. I've confessed them all to him. And I've told another human being. And so my self-esteem is genuine today. I have a sense of freedom. I don't live a double life anymore. The How you hear me talk on this radio and the things that I share on this radio, that's the way I live my life. Behind closed doors, out in public, on a public platform where there's you know hundreds of people listening, whatever. This is me. I'm not ashamed of it. I try to be the most transparent person I can be. This is is me this is who God made and I'm happy with who I am today I have genuine self esteem I have a sense of freedom that I never had I don't live in fear anymore I don't live in fear of other people I'm not I'm not phony anymore I'm just me. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent. I'm just me. And I'm okay with just me. And I never, ever, ever would have experienced this and get this freedom had I decided and chose to hold on to those secrets. There's just no way. And I know there's people out there that have some secrets that, uh, you know, there would be some incredible consequences, serious, serious consequences, if somebody knew. And I'm not here to say what you do. That choice is up to you. What you decide to do with those secrets is up to you. It's not my place to tell you how to handle that and what to do. I do, on occasion, experience talking with people who do have secrets that have significant consequences if people found out. And so I can understand that. But I in no way will tell somebody exactly what they need to do with it. All I can do is present what life is like without the secrets. I already know what life is like with the secrets. And individuals out there who also have secrets, they can already explain to you what life is like with those secrets. And I'm pretty sure if an individual was being completely honest with themselves they're probably going to come back and tell you life's not all that great inside i'm not talking about outwardly but inside where it matters inside our heart inside our mind that life's not all that great but each individual has a choice to decide what they're going to do for themselves. We either hold on to those secrets and we continue to live a double life, we continue to be phony, we continue to be in fear that somebody's going to find out, we continue to hold that shame and that darkness inside and that that feeling of uselessness and that self-pity. We get to choose. We either hold on to all that stuff or we do something about it. And make no mistake about it. I I am not trying to create any type of illusion that, uh, you know, this is easy. I know it is not easy. I, I... my own personal experience of dumping these secrets was not easy, but it can be done. 
And I have worked with individuals, guys who, um, you know, have spent a lot of time in prison. And some of the secrets that they've told me are secrets that would land them back in prison for the rest of their life. But they were not willing to live miserable anymore. And they shared with me some of that stuff. Now, they didn't tell me the details that uh, one might think, but in a therapeutic way, we're able to work through those secrets. And I know guys who ultimately had to go to prison anyway because of their past, but they dumped those secrets and they didn't go into prison holding onto those secrets. And I have literally spoken to individuals and gotten letters where they talk about how they have peace of mind, how they have a sense of freedom, even though they're locked up and incarcerated. Now think about that. How on earth could somebody who's in prison, incarcerated, have a sense of peace and a sense of freedom? Well, because they're not holding on to secrets anymore. And number two, I have no doubt that they truly had surrendered their life to Jesus Christ. And the Bible talks about having a peace that surpasses all understanding. But I look at it this way. Can you truly become friends with somebody if they're keeping secrets from you? Can, can you truly trust them if they're keeping secrets from them? And I kind of look at that the same way with our relationship with Jesus Christ. How can I have a true, genuine, spiritual relationship with God if I'm keeping secrets inside, oh, sure, I can admit to God, and God already tells us that he knows everything about us. But just because somebody knows something doesn't mean it's the same if we admit to it. And when we admit to another person, we get a sense of freedom. If it wasn't so important that we get rid of those secrets, it wouldn't be a passage in James 5.16 that tells us, go confess your sins to each other and then pray for each other. That wouldn't be in there if that wasn't important. If, if that wasn't important, you could just say, hey, just go come confess your sins to me and we're good. It's it. It's over. But that's not what it says. It requires both of them. And I challenge all of you. If you've got secrets, take a risk. Take a chance to live your life in peace to live your life with freedom. Let go of the sickness of your secrets. Find somebody you trust, your priest, a counselor, other clergy, whatever it is that you can tell those secrets to. Well, hey, listen, thank you so much for joining the show. I do have now have a private practice where I am seeing clients uh, in the late afternoon, in the evenings, and on weekends if need be. If you are interested or you're somebody that uh, is interested in counseling, I'm more than happy to help you with that. You can get a hold of me at 405-296-6445. Again, that's 405-296-6445. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I appreciate you guys. God bless you. We'll see you next week. someone you know is struggling with substance abuse, call Rob's Ranch today, 405-253-3838. Online at robsranch.org or find him on Facebook at Rob's Ranch.